Hey, welcome back to Quick Looks with the Casual Hour. My name is Bobby, and joining me as always is not nobody, but actually Chase, Kinnicky, the game somebody. on the go. You are somebody, and we're going to attempt to save the world as nobodies. What do you oh, think no. about all that? Like Kingdom Hearts? Are we? I, that's a lost reference, my friend. Okay. That's, that's uh, good. I'm glad that's a lost reference. Yeah, we're actually going to check out uh, a game called Nobody Saves the World. And Chase, before we do that, uh, everybody should like and subscribe if they would Obviously. like to hear more about games, pizza, sandwiches, friendship. And even if but you if don't, you just just like and subscribe anyway. Yeah, and if you want to know about Nobody Saves the World, ask the, the gaming encyclopedia, Chase. Oh uh, yeah, that, that's me. Uh, Chase, we're going to be starting at about four and a half hours into the game, just FYI. So, <laughs> Okay, <break. laughs> just... Sure. Uh, now, Bobby, uh, I believe this is a new game from Drinkbox Studios. You know, that old chestnut? I I, uh, I was going to say I like Drinkbox Studio. I've only played one of their games, though. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised. Uh, I've only played the first Guacamelee, which I really enjoy. Uh, okay. And that's surprising to me because I don't like Metroidvania style games. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed the first Guacamelee. I own the second Guacamelee. I just haven't played it. Um, yeah. I, I've never played their their Tales from Space games, like Mutant Blobs Attack or anything like that. Uh, Severed seemed like a really cool game that I just never ended up playing. Uh, but Severed's I really that cool. I, that's what people say. People say it's really good. I should try it. I think it's on yeah, the it's Switch really good. too. It's on and, uh, uh, this, the iPad, too. Pretty good on Right, iPad. yeah, yeah. I know it was on iOS. I think it's actually on 3DS as well. Um, cool. And then uh, and then this game, Nobody Saves the World. This is this is new, right? Yeah, this, is... this just uh, just came out. Okay, and this is on Xbox, um, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and uh, I believe you're playing this on the personal computer. Personal computer via Game Pass uh, at launch on that service, which is pretty damn slick. This is what one of those here, ones. Bobby? What is what is this? Man, this is this is a lot of things. Uh, I think you could look at this and looking at the map, like when we start the game off, we're down here in the bottom portion. Mm -hmm. uh, it zooms out. It's a pretty decent sized map. I think that this is a. I don't want to say it's only like a Zelda game. Yeah, it looks kind of like a past you might be able to link to. Yeah, it definitely has some undertones for a link to the past in it. A time um, of ocarinas. Um, yeah, yeah, it definitely is something that I, I think that you could you could easily say like, oh, this is like a, a top-down RPG, action RPG. It's got some Zelda influences to it. But what I think you're going to find is is that this is a game about managing some systems, creating some builds. There is some grinding to it, but it's like the most convenient grind I've ever had in a game. I think. Okay. And uh, the whole premise of this game is is that you are this nude little person with amnesia named nobody and, and you're, you wake up and you steal a wand and when you steal that wand you can then all of a sudden assume shapes of things so i can become a rat if i want to be a rat seems and very useful you got some nice teeth action there if you want oh, to attack my. with some teeth uh, <laughs> and if you wanted to be an egg well chase you could be an egg uh, okay, why, Bobby, why would you want to be an egg? I don't know. You can be one, though. Okay. And if that's not good enough for you, let's just be a slug that can cry. Okay, we're playing Bind of Isaac now. I see, I see. So, uh, does it cost you anything to change these forms? No, no, okay. not at all. So I've been thinking about like how I want to show this off to you tonight. And, and you uh, thought, I'll start with the slug. The slug's the way to go. Always the slug. <laughs> Now, Chase, I like, I love an action RPG. I really like tinkering and I like systems. And I'm gonna show you some of these things in, in practice, but I think before we do it, I'm gonna break down some of the systems of the game and, and explain to you why we might be doing this, if that's okay by you. Sure. So, first and foremost, your map is just littered with fetch quests, side quests that you can take on. Those quests live, um, in a quick access here on the main menu. So I can pull those up. That's what I currently have available to me. But if I go into our menu system, these are our current quests. And you're gonna notice that 
on this quest board, there's not really like a major objective of like, hey, you need to go here and do this. Um, but you're gonna see that these are broken down by guilds, affiliations, character type, and all of these will continue to be meters that you fill up that are upgrading a few things with your character. So I'm gonna draw your attention over to the right side of the screen because I can't move my cursor over there. You've got your overall XP, which is there at the bottom on level 14. And then the character that you are has their own leveling up system. And so nobody is a level C. If I come over to my zoomed out menu, these are all the people oh, that we've unlocked. My. Okay. And these are forms that we haven't unlocked yet. And you can see that I have a rating above each one of these. And that rating is only uh, achieved by how much you use them in their quests that you go into. So if I switch over to the rat and I come back over to that menu, you're gonna see that I've got two new okay. quests here for the rat. Okay. And as I complete these quests, it's gonna show you what the projected XP gain is gonna be for not only the form, but also your overall level. As you do this, you get the star points. We have 35 star points. That's the upper right hand corner. Those star points are what you use to unlock like new castles and things like that. So, hey, once you get 20 star points, come back here and you can get into this castle and that will advance the main story quest of trying to figure out who you are in this world. There was a superhero that is seemingly missing. His sidekick is an asshole. And you said, you know, fuck him. You steal the wand and then you go on an adventure where you're now being hunted by him and you're trying to understand who you are and what role you play in all the shenanigans that are happening. Okay. Now, we've established that you can change forms. You, you can see here that the rest of those forms will unlock. So when I get to a level B with the guard, that will unlock the magician. Makes and sense. And that's that little yeah. B mm -hmm. line between it there. Yep. Um, something else I wanted to point out is as the game progressed, so about the three hour mark, I unlocked something that I think is really, really cool. So every character, as you do quests with them, they unlock new abilities that happen down here and they just get mapped to your face buttons. But you can come in and be like, you know what, like I really like this type. So there's different attack types. There's a poison type, there's a light type, there is a, uh, a sharp, or I think blade or one of those, it's that green icon over there on the right. And then you can create your own builds. And you can start to take things from the forms that you're learning and bring them over to other forms. Ah, okay. So certain sure. forms are, are going to be required to do certain damage on enemy types. And you can really create some pretty awesome builds that are going to take these different abilities and layer them in. And each one of the abilities can be upgraded. That's what you so you can find these upgrade points just by killing people or, or doing quests and you can see the more that you do them the higher they cost so we've got like 33 upgrade points that we can dump into these characters and those abilities there are treadmills upon treadmills upon treadmills in this game sure and uh, let me get the horses i think the horse is one of the faster things um in the world now i've got a bunch of quests that i can do so i'm gonna take this fast travel point they're pretty liberal where they where they put those they're all over the place and near every one of these, we're going to find uh, a shop that we can go into and buy new things. So now uh, you can tear things up, find coins, health, etc. Make your way through here. I love the style. I love the music so far in this game. There's going to be big dungeons. There's going to be minor dungeons that you can go into. They're replayable. Um, the writing, I think, is pretty damn witty and at times has made me audibly laugh. I know video games trying to be funny don't always end up being funny. But we're also part of three guilds, um, a wizard's guild, thieves, a thieves guild, and like a warrior one or a, a mage or something like that. Okay. They give you quests to do. Um, let me see if I'm close to an actual event here. Yeah, there's like a little dungeon up this way. Um, one of the things you're going to see me do, like, I think the horse is one of the more, uh, like, it's pretty damn impressive to use. So I've got a kick attack, 
but if I hold the right trigger, it locks in how my horse faces. Oh, and it okay. can only so attack when it's straight. Attack. Sure. Yeah. So the horse can only attack backwards, so I can lock that in and then move around and attack. Okay. But if I hold this, it does a lot of damage that way too. Uh, it also tells you at the bottom like what level the area is that you've come across. And I've added a poison ability from the rat to the horse because I can just do that and poison everybody sure. really quick. Yeah, it seems useful. So the horse is really great at just like clearing out a big group. Um, but what I like about... So up in the upper left, you're going to see that you have health and mana. And so, like, you get to do th some things with builds where, like, my knight here, if I'm doing my standard attack, I'm replenishing mana. And if I do a stomp, it uses mana. So, like, you can do some really, really impressive things with that. Does does everybody so, like, have a way to gain or use mana? Or is this a situation where, hey, I'm the horse right now and I need some mana, so I'm going to switch over to the guard so I can get that mana back and then switch back to the horse so I can use those mana abilities? So, yes and no. Um, over here, you can see that this here, this consume. Mm -hmm. So 30% of consume damage is leached as health, and the cooldown is two seconds. That's directly taken from the rat, and I've put that onto my knight. So that skill set will get me back health, where this slashing sword attack restores mana. Now, I can come up here and look over that there's other items on here that would give me back different things. So like, I can get 15% of critical health damage, or critical hit damage is health. And I can start to move that around onto these different characters if I wanted to do that. So we can't get into that, uh, that building up there because we don't have 40 stars. But I'm gonna try and take you into a quick little dungeon over here on the right. Okay. Which it should be filled back up with something Otherwise, I'll take you to, like, a proper dungeon that we can get into. I think it's just a pass-through one, if I'm not mistaken. Now, are you getting Zelda-style puzzles in these dungeons where, hey, I need to change to a specific form to solve a specific kind of puzzle? No. Um, the enemy types, as I've progressed into it, yes. So, like, it used to just be going and kill things. Now... It'll throw in, like, okay, these enemies can only take damage if it's poison first. So, like, there's going to be, like, template matching in that sense. Um, this little design here, by the way, when you get to the boss of a dungeon, that's a quick back and forth. So, if I die, the uh, boss, sure. I can just warp mm -hmm. to it. Okay. Um, so, I'll show you here what I'm talking about. We'll, we'll get into it. So, like, this is one of the, the dungeons that starts to throw in uh, a few new things. Like, all these enemy types, I can just get through without having to match up anything and my knight's pretty damn good at like fast attacks as well currency gets dropped candy will fill your health back up but then again there's certain things that we can use to take care of that layouts of the dungeons for the most part are the same but like the they do generate so sometimes if you start this up like this blockade will be up here and not down there so it's not always the same but it's not different enough to be like hey what the hell's going on there okay so, this, so like those this, guys. This are... is an extremely combat-heavy game. Yeah, for okay. sure. For sure, like very much so. One of those games. A um, lot of like big-ass grindy type stuff, like you're seeing right now. Um, but there is some story beats in between that I think are pretty comical. Like, hey, you need to do a like. I I only will race horses. And there's another guy's like, I can't stand rats. I'm known for, I can defeat a rat in one punch. And you're like, you have to get your rat to a health level where it can withstand this one punch. So like, there's gonna be some other quests, but like the combat or like the dungeoning, I should say, is 100% very much what you're looking at right now. It reminds me a lot of a game that you and I checked out a few years back called Swords of Ditto. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the type of combat that you might find yourself uh, engaging in. And it, it can be a bit of a grind. And I mentioned earlier, like, it's one of the games that the grind has not seen to be that invasive. Like, everything that you do is moving uh, some sort of, of meter in a way that makes it easy to progress forward to get those 40 stars that you would need to open that door. And so, 
like I, I added, which you can see the benefit here, like my knight doesn't have any poison attack, but I can just come up and hit that consume attack. I've broken that barrier and then I can just finish him off really easily. Sure. So like I, I've made that build to be pretty efficient with him. Now I've got something I can check off here for the knight, which this is gonna get us up to B. Now we're gonna get that magician, which is really cool. Well, I thought we were going to. But we did get a new ability, Shield Bash. That's pretty cool. Oh, there we go. So we've got an actual magician now. Um, and this the magician does, starts... This does have a very... Um, I mean, I'm not saying this to be derogatory. It has that very Flash feel. It has that very um, Isaac... Uh, Bind of Isaac style. I, I think you see it a lot in the eyes here. 100%. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to point out here for these quests that I can't recall a game in recent time. It's not the first game that does this, but it's one that I think is really cool. Because, again, a game that's focused on leveling up and getting these meters. Uh, as I've leveled up, the shopkeep has uh, sold, and they're like 350 or 500 coins, these infinite quests. So they just reset immediately after you do them. Okay. And it's an easy way to always... like so. Anytime I pick, I get health 150 times, I'm going to get the X, 100 XP. Sure. And that okay. just resets. So, like, I've got these five quests that are constantly going in the background on top of the other shit. Um, let me switch this form really quick, and let's check that out, since I just yeah. unlocked it here on the, on what that would be. Uh, so, I'm going to grab the Magician. I've switched that form now. And his ability is uh, pick a card, and that just looks like an attack. So, we're level F... We can't do a whole lot. Uh, we need to kill a hundred times to pick a card. You just need then, to hit. You didn't need to kill. Yeah. So let's see if we can do that here in the dungeon while we're, we're hanging out and uh, see what the next level for the magician would be. Okay. There so, are things. So this is this is kind of cool. Like I, I, when I when I play RPGs, especially like turn based RPGs, like a like a Dragon Quest or a Final Fantasy, I I've really enjoyed the uh, like any any game with like a job system and this is basically a job system the game except yeah, you only 100%. have one character and that's that's kind of interesting the, the way you are swapping between these characters but my, my problem so far that I've seen or haven't seen is any is any reason really why you'd use one character type over another because it it seems like it's still just all combat focused so again like there are quests where you need to be in a certain form to yeah. do things like there's one person who won't allow animals in his shop and he's got a sale on these daggers and you're trying to do it for the thieves guild and you can only buy a dagger if you're a human. And I was one human shy of being able to buy it. So now that I got the magician, I can I can do that. Oh, okay. Is that a good enough reason to have like different types? It helps. I don't know. Hey, yeah, it I mean, helps. It's, it's yeah, it's better. It's better than nothing. Because like right now, what I'm seeing is just like this combat. If you if you felt like hey, the attack on the horse is just better than the attack with the the guard, why would you ever come back and use the guard? And, and I guess that's what I'm looking for, is, like, reasons that I should be using these other forms. Which is why I was kind of asking, like, oh, if, if the guard was the only class you had that, that could get your, your mana back. Uh, just as, like, seeing reasons why you should switch on or off different characters. Well, and the other thing that, like, doesn't help that that answer or give maybe what you're looking for is at some point in time we're going to be able to just take the best parts of these builds sure and add add more to it you know like i could take the best quality of the knight and put it on the horse yeah and, and you get that in a lot of uh, job system rpgs as well like I, I think about something like bravely default and like that that game is all about hey let's max out what we can get on this character and now we can use some of their passive or active abilities when i use the other classes and that's that's what this is going for as well but I, yeah I, yeah i'm still just kind of looking for a reason why you would swap like like well, why why did you swap to the magician right here other than to just do the magician's quest 
that's the reason. Yeah. And the other piece of it is, is that, um, again, like this is that the grind aspect of it. You have like the game throws you into it. So like within the first three minutes, like you've got three quests to do. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that like we're looking at here with this is, I need to. Oh, this is when you level up, by the way. You get all these things increased. Okay. Um. Like I just got another one of the star wands. The only way for me to progress the game forward is to get those, and the right. only like the easiest way for me to do it is to do the quest per character. Yeah, no, I, I get that. Like that, there's there's just something that's uh, a little arbitrary about that. Like that is something that was a, a developer forced us into that choice rather than us as a player going. Ooh, you know what would be cool right now? What if I tried this and use it in combination with this? And and so far, I haven't really been seeing this. Of like, hey, I I'm the knight right now. I want to use the knight's active ability to like smash all these guys back, and then immediately switch to the horse, so then I can do that that run up ability and smash through them. And I I guess you could do that. It just doesn't seem like the game is is. Uh, putting you in a position where you need to make a strategic decision like that. Sure. I get that. Like, so far, I haven't had something that's like, this is why you should be switching around. Yeah. Besides, like, different combat types. So that guy's got a but, crown. Any reason that guy had a crown other than he was just a bigger enemy than other guys? Yeah, he was, like, a leader type in there. So, like, more damage, higher health than, okay. than other other baddies that you'll come across um we're getting pretty close here to getting that other key so what what I'm, happens when you die uh it takes you back to the last set, save point okay uh you, you don't lose any currency or anything like that like you just you just start over um and and that's that's kind of how they approach that there so at the beginning of this dungeon and i'm gonna leave this dungeon here um you will see that there's like you just walk up to it and it does a save mm -hmm. so that you don't get to you don't get to like manually save besides that walk up portion of it how, um, how has the difficulty been for you it doesn't seem like uh, anything's been particularly difficult for you uh this, this dungeon anyway. that, yeah this dungeon we're in right now fucked me up quite a bit when i first tried it okay um and so i've i've come across areas so like you just save right there by the way um on the map, we can start to see a little bit. So these quests have popped up, and I didn't really pay attention too much. Um, well, I can't go all the way out right now, but it'll tell you level, like that's level eight. This one here is level 30. And they've got, they start to add stuff into it. So you're gonna need those abilities for the big gnarly. But by the way, all damage that you do and take is, uh, you know, almost 10,000. Sure. So, like, they start to add modifiers in on these okay. dungeons. That's the, cool. the higher the levels get. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to show you... I'm going to try and get out of here and show you one of the uh, one of the guilds really quick. And I think that'd probably be a good spot to, to wrap up here. Um, just so you get an idea of, like, the dynamic of what some of these look like. Let me see how close am I to one of those. Where is one of my guilds? Oh, I know where one is. Right, right by the... Uh, the home home stretch there so this is like one of the first areas that you really uncover in the game one of your first castles that you go into um but this is where one of the the ends are the round tables and these are uh the knight's guild so everybody in here had a quest and you had saved this person in the first dungeon you go to and now because of that uh, they, they're talking about being able to upgrade your ranking with them and get new quests. So we've just gotten all new quests because we've done more. And uh, we can see that we can turn things in. Sure. Get a few more bits here. And uh, the one thing I'll show you that I think is pretty good. Let me save. Is they're going to tell us to save? I'm going to show you the, the punch for the rat because I think... I haven't tried it for a few levels. I don't know if I'm strong enough yet as a B. Probably not, if I had to guess. So, uh, this is Rat's Bane, the One Punch Monk. So, destroy any rat with a single blow. 
bring it on. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We, we, we still can't take the punch. That's not. So that's what happens when you die. Yeah. You just come right back here. Okay. So, I I'm really digging it. I'm also a big Zelda fan. I love the tinker. I like systems, even if they're a bit more nuanced on like, hey, you should you should be doing this or not doing that. I mean, this this uh, seems like a great podcast game. Like you're just kind is. of relatively mindlessly going through some of this stuff. Trying to trying to get your quests up, uh, and just kind of cutting through enemies as you go. I, Dude, I, that, I, I, I mean, I that's agree. good. It's it's good that there are games like that out there. Like this required. I I, I will call this a mindless game. I think it's got an, a really sharp look to it. It runs incredibly well. Um, I like the humor, the writing. I like the design elements. I like the. I made this build a lot better. Like my knight can get through most of the dungeons I have right now. Sure. I think it's really fucking like, why not give me a mage? No, you get a magician. Yeah. That has a rabbit in a hat. Like, I think that's great. A slug. Like, I can put this stuff around and that slows enemies down, which helps me out. So then I can switch back over and, you know, do some other stuff like that. It's it's a cool game. I I have been playing a ton of it since I, I mean, I'm, I'm at like five hours almost. And it's been out for a few days. And I've found myself just really enjoying unwinding with this game quite a bit. But this is called Nobody Saves the World. I think there's more to the story than what they've lit on um, with your character Nobody. And I like these other forms that you can get. It is co-op. We didn't talk about that too much, but this is an uh, 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 sure. online co-op game that you can play with a buddy. So I think that you should check that out if you have the means to. Uh, but if you like games like this, or if you like video games in general, come hang out with us Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at twitch.tv slash casual hour where you play them and talk about them we do quick looks like the one you're watching every tuesday and uh, thursday on our youtube channel so like and sub subscribe there uh chase appreciate you being here and checking out nobody saves the world this has been a lot of fun yeah thank you